Hello and welcome. In this on-demand webinar, OJM Group partner, Carol Foos, CPA, shares practical tips for medical practices that have shut down or are operating at a minimal capacity. Carol is a certified public accountant and tax planning consultant with more than 25 years of experience. She has spoken at numerous medical conferences and presented webcasts and podcasts on a broad scope of financial topics. Carol and her partners at OJM are the authors of 12 books written specifically for doctors, including our newest book, Wealth Planning for the Modern Physician, Residency to Retirement. To get your free PDF or ebook download, text OJM Cares to 555-888. We're going to talk today about financial steps that you can be taking now. Um, I think for a lot of you, you've had a, a at the at a minimum a slowdown in your business i'm sure many of you have had a uh, very significant slowdown due to all the shelter in place rules and due to a lot of elective um, medical procedures not being allowed right now so i do want to you know touch base on a few things that we're trying to talk to our clients about things that you can do Number one, to help your business survive this downturn. Also, that you can utilize uh, some of this downtime for some planning for when your business reopens, maybe getting some things ready so that you're up and running quickly and just ramping up um, when you're able to. So first and foremost, I think it's important during this downturn to be in contact with the advisor that you feel like is your financial quarterback. You know, um, there are a lot of things going on in your practices right now, in your personal life in terms of financial matters. You know, maybe you're not drawing a paycheck currently or your paycheck has been significantly decreased in order to protect cash flow. So, um, you know, kind of that don't go it alone philosophy. You want to be sure you have a partner in your planning. Um, it's good to have a, a business advisor that you trust that you can talk to just as a sounding board. So regular communication is important. Um, advisors, if they're a good advisor, they should be a good listener and give you some non-emotional advice and input as to what you're going through. You know. Don't try to be your own advisor uh, during this time. It's it's easy to do that and sort of really um, get yourself into a tailspin in terms of not being able to take a step back and look at the big picture. So um, there's a lot of evidence out there that shows advisors do help clients avoid bad decisions. And without professional guidance, you know, you tend to succumb to the fear and, um, you know, go to that sell everything mentality or, or you know, what am I going to do panic mentality. So in addition, if you don't have a single advisor that you feel like maybe is your financial quarterback that you can talk to, I think during this downturn, it's important for you to talk to several different advisors um, for both your personal and your business assets. In terms of who you should be reaching out to and maybe what you should be talking to each of them about, first of all, um, your CPA. You know, maybe I'm jaded because I'm a CPA, but I think your CPA can be a great advisor. Hopefully, you've got one that's a great advisor. But when you're seeing a downturn in your business, you do want to touch base with your CPA. You know, you might need some help with guidance as to cash flow and how to manage that cash flow now that you don't have um, your normal revenue coming in. Doing some financial statement analysis, um, engaging your CPA to do that to determine, you know, what should you be doing now? Maybe what can you pay? What's the outlook for the next couple of months? Whether this downturn lasts, you know, for the remainder of the month or for longer than that. Um, what are some expense reduction measures that you can take? Uh, certainly in light of the CARES Act that passed, you 
definitely might want to reach out to your CPA for help with the, um, the SBA loans that are available with running some of those calculations related to what you can borrow. So that's going to be important as well. Um, also, I think it's important just to have a discussion with your CPA and maybe have that talk regarding how much are you willing to dip into your savings or to your retirement plan in order to continue to fund either your business or your lifestyle. Um, so be thinking about that, be reaching out to your CPA and staying in communication with them. I think they should be able to be very helpful to you uh, in this situation. Your banker is going to be another person you wanna reach out to because again, cash is king right now and you need to think about what's your available cash, how are you going to get that in order to pay vendors, employees, whoever it is that you deem is really important to continue to pay right now. Um, you might wanna to talk to your banker about possibility of making changes to your current loan covenants. You know, will they allow you on loans to pay interest only through this crisis? I think many banks are doing that. Um, you might wanna to talk to them about your line of credit and whether you can increase your line of credit or maybe what is available still on your line of credit. Um, also, it's a great time to discuss loan consolidation with them. If you've got some loans that are maybe at higher interest rates uh, or you've got a lot of various loans, perhaps you can consolidate those to um, refinance and spread out some of those payments, again, because you're trying to protect your cash flow through this period of time. Your investment manager is absolutely going to be someone you want to talk to. You know, again, finding out what cash is available in your portfolio, but also what are your other portfolio positions and how is your investment manager managing your portfolio? You know, there's a lot of volatility in the market right now. Certainly there's been a huge drop in the market over the past month, but you know, the last few days we've seen the markets come back a little bit. So just talking to your investment manager um, regarding how they're managing that. One of these um, advisors, whether it's your investment manager or your CPA or whether you've got a separate financial quarterback, you might also want to talk to about where does this put me? You know, where am I still on track with my retirement planning? I think that in and of itself can also provide a lot of peace of mind. You know, as we've been talking to clients over the last few weeks, we have found that a lot of them are, uh, are relieved to know, hey, you know, your portfolio is still okay. Your, your balance sheet is still okay. Yes, this is a hit but it's not going to devastate your plans. And I think it's important to have those kinds of conversations as well. Your attorney is going to be another advisor uh, that you will want to speak to. Certainly if you're considering any personnel changes or furloughs, um, you're gonna to wanna to talk to your attorney about that and how to make sure you're, you're doing that the right way and you don't want to get in a situation where um, you've got an employee claim against you from that. Also speaking to your attorney, maybe having them review any contracts that require payments or changes to any leases where you're deferring payments um, or reducing payments. Your insurance agent, um, you also might wanna reach out to. Now it seems to be that in general, policies for business interruption are not covering this interruption of COVID-19. Uh, what we've been hearing is that most policies have an exclusion for viruses and pandemics. But I think it still makes sense to reach out to your ins insurance agent, talk to him or her about the coverages you do have. Is there anything that might help you? Um, and also to just discuss what sorts of policies are available for you to put in place going forward, you know, and, and what are the costs of those? So you can be thinking about, does it make sense to add any sorts of coverage moving forward?
Okay, so next I want to talk about, you know, making some tactical adjustments or maybe sitting back and not making any adjustments and feeling like, okay, I've got everything in place. Again, collaborate with your financial advisors on this. Some of you may think about retooling your business um, according to your long-term plan. Again, this is the time to be thinking about that. Think about that long-term plan. Think about the efficiencies and the inefficiencies of your business. Maybe uh, it's the time to make some needed temporary changes. You know, as you've been hit by this revenue downturn, um, it's really going to be certainly important to evaluate and prioritize your employees. Maybe you've made the decision and you've determined that you can keep on all of your employees and continue to pay them through this crisis. Um, maybe you've determined that you were overstaffed and you need to cut some employees anyway, or you need to reduce some to part time or reduce some pay. But I think, you know, sort of making a list and prioritizing your employees in terms of who do you want to make sure um, is still back working for you at the end of this crisis and, and go down the list, you know, one through 10 list and prioritize them. Also evaluate what amount you're willing to front from current cash flow or reserves. So look at what, what amount you're willing to spend and then prioritize your expenses and how you can, you can spend that money. Again, this is going to involve you or someone in your practice uh, maybe reaching out to vendors on extending terms, uh, looking at your credit card company. Some credit card companies will offer a 60-day extension interest only. So what expenses can you put on your credit card and only pay interest to try to extend out these payment terms until there's more revenue coming in again? What can you do in terms of continuing to generate revenue? Um, is telemed an option, virtual consults? Do you have someone on your staff rescheduling all your appointments, you know, so that you are really ramped up and ready to go when you're allowed to, um, to work at full schedule again? Also, I think it's important to, to work with your staff, you know, to do some things to keep up your staff morale um, during this downturn, especially if you're not getting into your your practices at all or very little or you've got some people who aren't getting in at all. You know, people who aren't used to working remotely, um, some people love it, some people hate it. But but I do think just in terms of that camaraderie that you get when you're physically together working in an office, people miss that. So doing things like group chats or Zoom video conferences every so often uh, keeping them informed about what your plan is or what's going on, I think is also important because certainly they're also dealing with a lot of, of uncertainty. And again, especially for that, those members of your staff that you want to make sure are coming back when you're in full swing again, you just want to keep them engaged and um, make sure that they're doing okay and feeling good about things. I do want to talk a little bit about the CARES Act provisions. Some of you may have been on a webinar that I did last week regarding the CARES Act. I'm certainly not going to go into a lot of detail about it today, but if you have not um, gotten up to speed on some of the provisions of the CARES Act, it's really the time to do it right now. So the Paycheck Protection Program Forgivable Loans um, are for cover dates from February 15th to June 30th. A business with less than 500 employees is generally eligible for these loans as are self-employed um, individuals and independent contractors. Those self-employed and independent contractors, I believe, can start applying for this this Friday on April 10th. Um, so again, those Paycheck Protection Program loans, you apply through a local SBA affiliated bank. You do need to make a good faith certification that you need the money to help get you through this uncertain period. 
Um, but you can take out a loan. And again, I'm going to simplify this for today's webinar, but essentially you can borrow up to two and a half months of your average monthly payroll. And that includes um, group health benefits and retirement benefits that the company pays. Uh, it does not include any compensation for any one employee that would exceed $100,000 in a given year. So you're limited to an annual wage of $100,000 for any given employee um, and doesn't include money that you're going to be taking payroll tax credits or other things under some of these coronavirus acts. You can use those loans, and again, this is important, you can use the loans to cover for the next eight weeks or for the eight weeks after you receive the loan, your payroll costs, your group health benefits, your retirement benefits for employees, your mortgage interest, rent, and utilities, and also interest on debt. So um, the SBA came out last Thursday night with some interim final guidance where they said uh, they they changed the terms, the maximum maturity per the law was 10 years. They've said these are going to have um, a maturity, a shorter maturity than that, but also only a 1% interest rate and payments are deferred for six months. So if you are a practice owner and you do have, you know, need some money to help you cover payroll during the next couple of months, this is a great program. Um, the loans can, principal amount of the loan can be forgiven for costs incurred in the eight weeks that I just mentioned, payroll, mortgage, interest, rent, utilities. They're, they won't be fully forgiven if you have reduced your full-time equivalent employees or if you have reduced their salaries by greater than 25%. You'll have a reduction in forgiveness. But again, look into these. Um, Everyone is saying they feel like the money's going to go pretty quickly. $350 billion was allocated to this program in the CARES Act. Uh, I heard Secretary Mnuchin say today, again, they think it's going to go quickly. They are working towards adding more money or another program that will infuse more money once this money's gone. But reach out to your CPA and your banker about these if you have not already. Also be talking to your CPA about um, the refundable employer FICA tax credits. That's the 6.2% social security tax that employers pay on their employees wages. Um, you can request a credit if you're paying sick leave or family leave under some of these new coronavirus acts. Maximums are on the screen, uh, $511 per day for 10 days for sick leave being paid. $200 per day max for family leave. Also, there is an employee retention credit. This is also a FICA payroll tax credit for businesses that are forced to close or suspend operations. Um, for that credit, um, you do need to fall into one of two categories. Either your business is fully or partially suspended by the government due to COVID-19, or your gross receipts are below 50% of the comparable quarter in 2019. So if I'm looking, now we're in the second quarter of the year, if I'm looking at the second quarter of 2019 and my revenue has dropped by more than 50%, I'm eligible for this employee retention credit. Again, it's a credit of my employer FICA taxes paid. Um, so talk to your CPAs about that as well and, and potentially to your payroll tax provider as well. There are also some separate loans called economic injury disaster loans. These are applied for directly through the SBA website, not through your bank. Um, they are, there's a wider array of costs that these EIDL loans can be used for. So um, they can be used, for instance, for things like your accounts payable, paying your vendors for supplies. The Paycheck Protection Program loans, that's not a, an allowable use for those. You can get both an EIDL loan and a Paycheck Protection loan. You just can't use those for the same expenses. 
Um, the EIDL loans also, you have the ability to request an advance of up to $10,000 and those advances are supposed to be paid within three days of application. So again, if you are hurting for cash or you're not sure how you're going to pay some of the bills for your business, um, look into these EIDL loans, again, directly through the SBA website or those paycheck protection loans, which are applied for um, via your, your bank. And there is a list of banks, SBA affiliated banks on the SBA's website. If you're not sure if your bank's SBA affiliated, you can certainly call them, but you can also look on the SBA's website to find an SBA affiliated bank near you. So we've talked about, you know, talking to your advisors, we've talked about making some adjustments to your business, um, utilizing some of the things in the CARES Act to help your business through this crisis. This is also a really good time, I mentioned it earlier when we talked about the advisors, to review your, your financial and retirement modeling. Um, you know, at some point this crisis will end and Things will get back to normal. It may be a new normal, but nonetheless, it will get back to normal. And, you know, for peace of mind, for whatever it might be, it can be very helpful to focus on the long term. So, you know, one of the things you can do is work with your advisor in running some of these financial models or retirement models and just look at best medium and worst case scenarios. Where am I? What's my portfolio look like? What does my business plan look like? You know, it's a great time to work on your strategic plan. Maybe your business will be forever changed in one way or another. Um, you know, maybe that's for the better, but it's a good time to be looking at your strategic plan. You know, what are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? My guess is probably for many of us, um, when you, if you've done a strategic plan before, you weren't thinking as one of your threats, a pandemic that might shut you down for a month or severely limit your revenue uh, generating for a month or more. So if you've got a long time horizon, then taking a long term perspective often eases your anxiety about what's going on in the market currently. And it also can help you stick to your original plan. You know, um, if your retirement modeling was built, say with, hey, we only need your portfolio to make, to earn 5% a year or 6% a year, it's helpful to look at what the market's done right now um, along with, okay, it's not, it's not as drastic maybe as it, as it seems, or it's not done taken such a toll on your long-term planning. If you're a business owner in the red zone, getting close to retirement or already in retirement, certainly a downturn uh, timing matters. The closer you are to retirement, the harder it is to recover from that downturn. But hopefully also if you're in that position or at that point in your life and in your retirement planning, uh, your portfolio may have already been positioned more conservatively. So maybe your portfolio and your assets aren't down as much as some of your colleagues. Um, you know, hopefully you avoided greed and stuck to sort of your plan over the last few years, even though we we're in a, uh, a huge bull market. And if you were more conservatively invested, knowing you were close to retirement, then your portfolio is probably still okay. But again, reviewing your plans, making a renewed focus on how this change to your um, asset value will affect your spending, your cash flow, looking at your rainy day funds. And as we get out of this, you know, do you need to rethink those plans or the amounts that are included in those various buckets? It's also a good time to review your asset protection. You know, we are dealing with a risk right now. We're dealing with the coronavirus risk. We're dealing with a business downturn and a market downturn. So it certainly makes sense to make sure you're protected against other risks. 
we talked before about contacting your insurance agent and talking about your property and casualty coverage. Um, you know, again, for the practice, looking at all of your coverage, you know, do you have cyber coverage? Now you might have a lot of employees working from home in some manner. Um, make sure you've got some cyber coverage or also make sure that they're uh, they're working in a secure environment that, you know, your patient's information is protected if they're utilizing that from their homes. Look at your disability insurance. Your greatest asset often is your earning power. So make sure that your ability to work or to generate revenue is protected. Make sure you've got a strong disability policy. Look at your life insurance policies. Evaluate your death benefit. Um, if you've got permanent life insurance that has a cash value, typically those policies have an investment floor. So, you know, that asset might be looking pretty good right now if its floor is 0% or 1%. Um, whole life policies will credit dividends of 5 to 6%, and equity index policies have a floor of 0 or 1%. So take a look at those. If you don't have that, you know, that might be something in your planning that it makes sense to have moving forward. Look at your buy-sell arrangements with your partners. Again, we've gone through uh, a lot of change. Your practice has gone through a lot of change. Is your buy-sell up to date? Are the values up to date? Are those buy-sell arrangements funded? How are you going to fund them? This is a good time to be thinking about that and planning for the future. Um, your long-term care coverages, again, protecting your assets, right? Not only for yourself, but if you've got aging parents, do they have long-term care coverage? What's going to happen if you have to be the caretaker or you or your spouse have to be the caretaker for parents? Do you have the ability to do that? And how's that going to affect your ability to earn your income? You know, it's also important to note from an asset protection standpoint, these downturns, when everybody's hurting economically, we tend to see an increase in litigation. So again, if you're looking at furloughing employees or letting, go, letting employees go, reach out to your attorney, make sure you're covering your bases on that. Um, Make sure you're talking to your attorney and you've got documentation as to why maybe you're letting one employee go versus another in the same position. It's a good time also to look at your estate planning. Again, for both yourselves and your parents, you know, if your parents' estate planning is not done uh, or not done well, that tends to affect one of their children. Somebody's got to handle that. So again, if you've got some freed up time, it's a good time to be thinking about some of those things. Also, I mentioned at the beginning your financial quarterback, you know, kind of who's your most trusted advisor from a financial standpoint. If you don't have one or you can't answer that question, who, who that is for you, then this might be a good time to find one. You know, transparency equals trust when you're talking about your financial advisor. So understand your various financial advisors, how they charge you and how they make money. Are they a fiduciary for you? Are they looking out for your best interests? If you have a financial or investment advisor, understand what's their duty to you. Again, is it a acting in your best interest or is it just finding things that are suitable for you? Um, what are they incentivized by? Are they incentivized to put you into certain investments because they make more money on those investments? Or are they just incentivized to have your portfolio be the highest value it can be regardless of what, you're, what are inside that portfolio? Um, and know what you're paying and how you're paying that advisor. Because again, to have your most trusted, you know, consider someone your most trusted advisor, you want to you don't want to be surprised down the road um, about something you never knew about them or maybe how they make money on your accounts. Um, a fiduciary advisor, again, has a duty to their clients to always act in the client's best interest. 
we think that's important. A broker doesn't have to act in the best interest of the client. They just have to have a suitability standard. They have to do things that are suitable for the client. So, you know, I think it's important for you to know with your financial advisors is their highest loyalty to you. Um, so be thinking about that and looking into that right now. This also might be a time to be thinking about marketing your practice. Um, if you're not doing a lot of that now, should you be doing more? You know, are there some things you could be doing now, such as creating marketing videos, um, posting those on your website or posting them on social media to help drum up additional patients when you're back to full practice? Evaluate your website if you've got one. Uh, review it. Think about what you want to change it might be a good time for you to take a look at some of your colleagues and competitors' websites and start thinking about what do you like about those, what do you dislike, how do they compare to your website, um, and work with whoever in or outside your organization um, make, you know, update your website and make some of those changes or talk about making those changes. And evaluate some of the other ways you're marketing determine if they're effective. You know, take the opportunity to become more proficient in social media marketing. I think we're going to see a lot more of that um, and expanded uses of that, especially once we get out of this crisis. It's also a good time to educate yourself on financial matters. Um, I mentioned earlier, we've got books on our website that are free to participants on this webinar. So um, you can go to our website at www.ojmgroup.com and enter that code to, um, to get free books. You can also read our newsletters on there. You can listen to our webinars and podcasts on various things, and you can even um, get a free consultation. Thank you. OJM is a multidisciplinary wealth management firm. We have worked with over 1,500 physicians throughout the country. We would welcome the opportunity to speak with you about how we might be able to bring value to your wealth planning. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, OJM Partners have authored several books, all of which are available to webinar viewers at no charge. You can get a free PDF or ebook download for Kindle or iPad by texting the code on your screen to 555-888. You can also visit ojmbookstore.com and enter the code at checkout. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we are temporarily unable to fulfill orders for print copies of our books, but we'll make this option available as soon as possible. In addition to our free book, OJM Group also offers webinar viewers a complimentary consultation where we can answer your questions and see if our firm might be a good fit for your situation. Visit ojmgroup.com or call 877-656-4362 to schedule a free consultation. Enjoy the free copies of our books, and we hope to have the opportunity to speak with you. Thanks for watching.